Hi guys, I wanted to make a video today talking about my shelves, the plants that are on it, how I care for them, and why I chose for them to be on this shelf. Um, I'm very happy with these new shelves that I got. They are from, yeah? It's my daughter, excuse me. Okay, so this is my one corner. I have this, which I used to have a plant on, which during the winter, I'll put the plant back there, but during um, summer, there's it's outside. There's no, really, no point having it inside, and I want it to grow real nice outside. So this is a grow light. I got this off of Amazon. I could turn it off while I do this, but then the plant's kind of dark because it's a dark corner, so. This is a hanging light from Amazon. It comes with this base. This actual frame is separate and the bulb is of course separate. It is a grow light bulb. So I put this guy here and ever since I put him in this corner, he has been super happy and way more perky. I do have it um, somewhat staked up, not because it was drooping, but because I didn't want it to be against the wall. I don't know why, but that triggers me having my plants smooshed on the wall like this. I feel like it's gonna wreck their little leaves. So I'll even probably turn him so that's not As usual. I ran out of space, so I'm back restarting. Anyways, this guy is in a planter, just in it without any nursery pot. I water it when it's completely dry on the radar or my, my little moisture meter. And I just fill it around until I feel it's an adequate amount of water for the root system. And then I let it drain out and then I put him back. So he's been pretty simple, pretty easy. He hasn't undergone really any stress. I really haven't had any bugs on him. Um, as you can see, he looks good. There's some watermarks from spraying him, but he is pretty happy. This is one of the newer leaves. It's got that like iconic summer um, glory. It's not a summer glory, is it? Summer glory, fenditrin, summer glory. This is summer glory. I don't know why I like blanked on that for a second there, but I did. Um, all right, so then we have this guy, which is my pedatum. I think that's how you say it. It's a variegated pedatum. Um, he actually reverted, so I got this guy for a very low amount of money, which was very nice. I don't think I will ever be able to bring back the variegation as it stemmed a completely new stem off the original one. So unless it grows out of this base, I don't think we're going to get a lot of variegation here. So same deal with this. It is a philodendron, so I let it dry out pretty much all of the way about 90 percent if not more i know that sounds scary but i promise you you will be fine okay right now it is wet so he is good he's been watered yesterday i believe or the day before but um yeah it is kind of sad that the variegation is gone there's only like this much left and i really don't see any in the vine so there's a little coloration discoloration but for the most part it is pretty just solid green so that's a really good indication that that variegation is never going to come back uh but we'll see who knows maybe 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 it will just surprise me i don't know but here is a florida green i have neglected this guy a little bit he's got i don't think that's spider mites i think that's just pollen or dirt hopefully it's not spider mites because like i am sick of clearing bugs i don't see anything moving i don't see any webbing and he's not declining. I think I just need to clean it. Um, but he's in this beautiful planter from Target. It was $15. It was something I saw and I was like, I just have to have it. So I got it, yeah. Uh, same deal with this as the Summer Glory. It is in a drainage pot. So I wait till the water meter is completely at zero, pretty much and then I will give it a good water, drain it, put it back. Same as everything else. Um, up here we have a mottled golden dragon variegating, variegating, <laughs> propagating. It's beautiful, so I'm conflicted on whether I want to keep this top cutting or if I wanna list it and sell it. I have another one in my bathroom that I kind of wanna keep instead of this one. It's a middle cutting. This one is the top cutting, as you can see. I could cut it here and have two, but I want someone to get the full plant instead of, you know, a bunch of cut pieces. So 
He is waiting. I'm I'm not I'm bleh. I'm gonna wait till he has adequate amount of roots and then I will pot him up and list him. Well, I first wait and see if he declines at all, but here we have my Monstera Escalado. Escalate Escalado. I don't <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it, but I said it that way, so hopefully I am not wrong. If I am, I'm very sorry. Uh, I've been tempted to cut this guy because he has so many like pretty aerial roots coming here that I think he would prop very easily. It's just, uh, it makes me nervous thinking of cutting this because it's done so well and it's come so far. Let's do a bug test on this guy too. Do we see anything moving? I do not. It's just dirty. <laughs> Whoops. So yeah, he is in a self-watering planter, which I do let dry out once it's empty so that I don't overwater, over flood. So he... Um, Monsters typically do enjoy a lot more water than say your philodendron. So being in this, I've rarely had any have root rot. That's not saying that they cannot because they definitely can, especially if you're constantly refilling it before it's empty, you definitely run the risk of that. We have this cute little guy that I think my son and my daughter picked out, it's a little frog. I cut off the top and planted him here. So far he seems to be still alive. So whether that will be successful or not, I don't I don't really know. But yeah, we'll see, huh? Moving along, we have this. I forgot to uh, fill the water and it was sitting dry for like a couple days, I'm sure. So he's yellowing in some spots, but like this leaf is gorgeous. So there's happy leaves in here. Who knows, we'll see. Um, if you don't have this, you should get it. Sorry about my dust, I have so many beings that live in this house and none of them know how to clean. So that is where we're at. Um, here's my syndapsis, my silver pothos. I don't know what name people really like to uh, aim towards or pick or like the most, but this is my satin pothos, pothos. There's so many ways to say everything, but apparently the proper term is pothos. I say pothos. I feel like most people <laughs> do, but I don't know. My mom got me this guy uh, a while ago, I think last year, and he has the biggest leaves. I think he's so gorgeous. And just the way he fills out the shelf is just very like aesthetically pleasing to me, which is what I wanted for this whole shelving system. I didn't wanna just pack it full of plants. I wanted it to have some sort of order, some sort of like decor aesthetic instead of just I'm gonna fit as many plants as I possibly can on here and just go with it. But anyways, that was my plan. We'll see how it works. We have a little shark tooth that my we got at a store. How cute is that? I love it. All right, so here we have my Baltic Blue. I think it's a Baltic Blue, yeah, it's Baltic, Baltic Blue. I've had this one probably the longest. I just, oh, and same with this. So these guys I let pretty much dry out completely. This guy was like dry for like four days usually. And then I'm like, oh, I should probably check on him. And then it's like so light that it's hard to even water it because I've waited so long. But as you can see, he's not unhappy. <laughs> he is fine. All right, we have my Cebu Blue, which is also, he has struggled a bit <laughs> because I also neglected him quite a bit with the watering. Uh, I underwatered him quite a bit and his leaves kind of got a little sad, but he's bushed up real real nice being on the shelf I will say and you can see he has a lot of baby vines that are growing out here They're kind of wonky because the lighting changed so many times that he kind of got leggy in some spots lost some leaves and tried to regrow But he's been a trooper. I got him when he was real little and now he's just living his best life now, it could be closer together, the spacing, but I don't really care about that. I'm just letting him be him because I don't want to like cut, prop, and he is doing great. I also let this guy go pretty dry before rewatering it, and he seems to be super happy with that sort of watering system. So I don't really set a schedule for any of these plants. I do it when they're dry. So here's just an overall of this shelf because I haven't really done that yet. Sorry if you hear background noise. My family is home. They live here too, so it's just kind of how it is. Um, same thing with this side, this corner. I will go back. I know I kind of deviated, but um, 
the same setup here. I do want to get like a really pretty wicker shade for this so it's not such a industrial vibe, but that's that'll come later. I have this jungle boogie. I would prefer to have something else here, but I'm not sure what sacrifice I want to make, like what plant I want to move from a spot I already have it in because I really like all of the placements that I have my plants in right now. I hate moving things around when I don't want to, but this is for sale, so it's going to go eventually. I cannot use it as a filler. Um, and that is a jungle boogie, booger. <laughs> uh, he is the same care as the other philodendron, in my opinion. He has some stress. You can see here, the, the dots are not fungus. That's kind of a misconception. It is because it got stressed at some point, created a lot of extra nectar, um, and it ended up eating through that part of the leaf that it created those little stress nectars. And then we have my Philodendron Majestic. I feel like this leaf got bigger. It looks like it's yellowing on my phone, but it, it's not. There, you can see it's very beautiful. It has these silver streaks in it. Um, I also need to clean it. I should just do a day where I clean all of these on this shelf. But he is in a non-soil mix, I believe. And that is my favorite way to plant philodendron. I don't like soil. You can see some nice roots there. And they seem to really like it. I just run water right through it when he's ready and then wait till it's completely dry and they seem to do their best that way. I only Hoya I have in my home is this one. I really have neglected him a lot. I swear I don't even check to see if it needs water. I just pour a little bit in here and there and he seems to be okay. <laughs> He has adapted to my neglect and is doing fantastic. Yes. Um, we have my Alocasia Dawn, which we call our macro, macro rises, macro rise mints. Um, we corm grew a lot of ours from the main parent plants that we received. And they have the prettiest variegation. I will be having a lot of these come to our store once they grow. They're in just tiny little babies right now. and. I don't feel comfortable shipping babies that are that small yet, so we'll wait till there's about two leaves, and then we will list those for people to grab because they are just, they are so beautiful. They've got these like model mint uh, variegated leaves, and I'm definitely obsessed with that. Um, here is my Pariso Verde. I think that's how you say it. Pariso Verde. Pariso or Pariso Pari. I don't know, whatever. Um, I know I've shown this plant before, but look how pretty he is. It's also got that mottled vibe, and here's this new leaf. And you can see he has that same variegation. It's just because the light, leaf is so light and vulnerable right now, it hasn't come through. Um, this was the leaf before this one. But you can see he's definitely retained that variegation, thankfully. And I did cut this, that's why it is so small and just started the new growth and the new growth is so cute. So yes, and him, same deal, wait till it dries and they seem to really like that system. I do have one philodendron that doesn't like to, try, that doesn't like to get watered very often. It really throws a fit if you do and I will maybe talk about that in a different video because it's not about this, so. Wow, Taz, way to get so distracted. Yep. Anyways, moving along. I need to practice pausing before things because I just go from one thing to the next really, really, really fast. And it even like is difficult for me when I'm editing my videos because there's no space in between my sentences. I cannot even cut things properly. But anyways, this is my prized possession. This was my most expensive plant I've probably ever purchased. Um, I think I got him for like 120, I wanna say. I mainly got it for this shelf. I'm not even gonna lie. I literally purchased it for this shelf. But I didn't think it would grow a new leaf anytime soon. But just wait. <laughs> but yeah, so he was one, and his little uh, catafil was like this big, this big. Look, <gasps> it's gonna be so big. I can't believe it. And look, he even has a little growth point down there. Don't mind that gnat. He has claimed this as his territory because he's a little asshole, but we're working on it. I don't really want to flood this guy with any sort of chemicals yet because I'm scared to kill it. Literally, I like would rather have him have gnats and infect all my other plants than to even like think about hurting it. Huh. 
yeah. But anyways, I water him when he's completely dry. And so far, we haven't had any decline. He did yellow a little bit from when I got him home. But other than that, there's no bugs, no further decline, nothing. So I think he just got a little stressed. And it may have, may have even been at the place he was before where he got that. I wasn't 100% sure, but I just got this recently. See, no pause. I'm going to pause. Okay. <laughs> I just got this recently at Lowe's, I believe. It is the cutest little cactus ever. I saw someone's YouTube and they had their little cactus in something similar and I was like, I need to do that. That is the cutest thing ever. And I think this little cactus is the cutest damn thing ever. I've said that five times. I'm sorry, I really am. But anyways, this guy is in no drain holes, it has no drain holes. So I will water it maybe once a month, just a little bit of my pump sprayer into him and um, then leave it knowing that because you kind of get into a habit of knowing how much water is too much water for no drainage a little goes a long ways because it sits at the bottom and then it it's, uh, slowly absorbs it throughout the entire um, container and it, it gives your plant the perfect amount of moisture without over watering so I'm testing it to see how it goes maybe there'll be a video down the line of me saying it's dead. But for right now, he, he loves life. So we're gonna keep doing what we're doing and kind of go from there. And then we have my asparagus fern, which I really wanna get rid of and I'm not sure, like who's gonna buy this? Who wants this? It's not I anymore, I don't want it anymore. So I <laughs> don't really know what to do with it, but he just sits in a self-watering planter and most ferns absolutely love that. So if you have ferns and you're confused on how to take care of them, get a self-watering planter. It will save you so much drama, I promise. Oh, I just hiccuped really loud. <gasps> oh, there's another one. This is not on my shelf, but hang on, we're gonna pause. I really should have done my nails before this. I have been replanting so much. I promise I'll work on it. Okay, so we have my Ginny Peperomia. Technically not on my shelf, but let's just take one more look at this shelf. I should have hidden this and pretended like my kids don't swim and have fun, but we're just gonna throw that there. Okay, so this is my dining room and these are my shelves. I am in love and I need to still hang that, don't I? Oops. Anyways, here's my Ginny Peperomia. What are those black dots? It better not be bugs, because I don't approve of that. No, it's not, okay. I had this since it was just one tiny little stalk, and this guy has just shot up. What is that? It's not thrips, is it? No, it's not. Okay. I keep getting distracted. Sorry. But look how pretty these leaves are. This is like the happiest plant ever. Now, I will say most peperomia, in my opinion, are very similar to succulents, especially these rubbery ones, which most are the rubbery kind. And it will retain water for a long time. I won't water this for, I'll water this like maybe once a month. And he seems to do great. I've never had anything die on him. Um, he gets a few nicks and stuff and maybe will stunt growth every now and then when I like really under water. But it does have a beautiful pink tone to the leaves, which is very appealing. And it has been a very successful plant, honestly, in my opinion. So I don't think it's ever had bugs. I don't think peperomias for the most part really attract bugs because I've never really dealt with bugs on my peperomia. Now watch, I'll like zoom in and there'll be like a whole colony of spider mites or something. Just needs to be washed. Next watering, I will like spray it off. And it's in a drainage pot, so has a hole at the bottom and it's in a very chunky mix, which Peperomia don't necessarily need to be in a chunkier mix. They can be in a more compact, denser soil mix because they do like moisture, but they're also drought tolerant in my opinion. My opinion, I don't know if that's a fact, but from my experience of neglect, that seems to be how it is. So yeah, that's like a good thumbnail in it to take a quick thumbnail because that was perfect. So I wasn't gonna do the shelf, but I might as well, or um, shelves, shelf, shelf, standing, floating shelves, wow, wow. Not really, because it has the brackets, but 
Anyways, I have another one of these light thingies. Uh, I do need to also put a lampshade on that because it's ugly. But um, we have my Glad Hands Philodendron Glad Hands. How cute. I love this shape leaf if you couldn't tell. Yeah, isn't it pretty? Look at my old house in Minnesota. So cute. Uh, my mom in law, mother in law, had um, that painted by somebody and it's so cute. And then we have an, uh, the same pedatum that was over there, but I took this separated them and you can see there's a little variegation but there's like none and the stem is not showing me any any variegated stem action so I think we're at a loss for that you guys I really do this is a narrow escape it's different a little different from a jungle boogie as you can see it these curve kind of like that whereas those I guess they kind of do I don't know. I think it's just the way they grow different. But he is in a pot that has a drain hole and I also water when dry, completely dry. Like he's dead, almost out the door, dry. So don't overwater guys, you got this. I have cuttings that I've just shoved here because well, I didn't really know where else to put them and nobody sees them, so shh, it's okay. We have a variegated seafood blue, which I'm pretty sure reverted, which is, very heartbreaking, but what can you do? We have a Splendid, which I cut up. I think this is another Splendid. No, this is my Milano Chrysum. Yeah. And then we have more Splendid, which is so pretty, you guys. And I am propagating this for my page, for my website. We have a Ataba Poense. This is a top cutting. Once this roots a little bit more, I will pop this up and I will list it when this leaf up here has grown because then I know 100% that the plant is happy and living its best life. And I should sand this and redo it because I got some water marks on there from the previous plant that was there. But anyways, now we are at my, we are now at my <laughs> Mexicanum. I got this from someone that lives pretty close to me. They live 40 minutes from me. She has so many cool plants and I always am going over to her and getting plants. I couldn't stomach the thought of cutting this even though this would be a really good propagation um, node for me. It would prop real easy, but I just, I don't know, I can't stomach it, you guys. I cannot, I cannot. <sighs> You know, that one's gonna have nodes that are gonna, or aerial roots that are gonna come off as well. So maybe I'll do that one, but I really just don't wanna cut it. I really love him. Yeah, isn't he pretty? I love the little ears and I'm very excited to see what this new leaf is gonna look like. I am worried that he's gonna get stuck because there's not a lot of humidity here. So I will peek at that and make sure that he's not getting stuck. And yes, I know, you don't have to tell me not to mess with the catafalque. I know, I know. I'm gonna do it anyways because like I've had so many leaves die from not doing it and then doing it has probably 85% of the time been successful and they get stuck so often because the humidity in my home is very low and it cannot quite release the leaf. So if you have tips and tricks on how to avoid that, I'm all ears, but yes, I do know not to mess with them, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to do it anyways. Um, this is my, pause, this is my zebra um, gloriosum, phil philodendron gloriosum zebra, and I haven't checked, bug checked this guy in a while. Looks good. There's nothing moving around. Sturdy. But like we have our windows open all the time and there's been so much pollen coming in our house. Um, this leaf got really weird and, and I didn't touch this one. I didn't touch this one, but it ripped somehow and I think it got stuck because if you look at the bottom, I peeked, it got stuck on the bottom base part. It's like not releasing it. So I don't know what to do. I'm, it's so stuck that there's no way to even release it. So I might just, wait it out and see what happens or take like a warm paper towel, wrap it around for a while and see if that kind of lubes it up, if you will. Cause I just, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to do. 
And then I just have my decor here. I do have my um, essential oil um, runner here. What I do do though when I run this is I move these plants because some of the essential oils can be toxic to the plants and it does settle, of course, back down onto them like a humidifier would. So just in case you guys do that, move your, move your um, plants or put this in a location that's not going to hit your plants. Like I might move it on top of this guy instead of having my fern here, which by the way, loves this self-watering planter. Look at all that new, that is all new growth. I haven't got a lot of leg growth, but that is all new. So it's very happy. This cabinet did have thrips, so I'm very angry at it and I'm not gonna talk about it, so. Hi! <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we're not, we're not talking to that cabinet right now. But yeah, this is my Ikea shelf. I forgot the name of the actual shelf itself, but if I do, I'll link it down below. I wanna say thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you really enjoyed seeing my setup here um and want to kind of follow that trend maybe in your home these shelves are amazing they're sturdy and they're definitely worth it aesthetically worth it i promise uh, i might have to do something in the center but it's the best decision i ever made and i am so proud of it and i'm so happy to have it in my home but yep thank you very much for watching make sure to check out our etsy my instagram or tiktok i post to there quite often and we have new listings every couple of weeks to you know a couple times a month so definitely check that out and follow if you are interested in purchasing anything any plants from me gosh can i speak wow have a lovely rest of your day you guys